जो स्पीड क्षेत्र है More weak right there happens. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to seal that when I'm finished. And third and final pass. Greens. And then off the shave. Two for eight. <laughs> okay. This is still the basic shave, I know. Sorry. Yeah. Now I'm going to talk about uh, the reason why I. Do this video uh, now where I got your attention at least <laughs> I'm gonna clean up here first and I'm gonna put up some other stuff and I'm gonna stop this with a little Arden I'll be back in a couple of yeah, hello everybody uh, small clip here before the actual video is gonna continue um, I was uh, saying that this is gonna be a rather long video for me but I hope you want to see the video to the end because there is some uh, information that was supposed to be told earlier in the video but uh, yeah that happens all these videos i do is just uh, mumbling and rambling and from start to end and sometimes it doesn't go as i planned so um, the story uh, i was the joke or the story i try to tell you is that it's a story about a dragonfly and a dragon and um, that went wrong of course <laughs> then i started to mumble and i talked and talked a lot but i want to thank you more and the barbarian um, and um, his help to doing this possible the things i'm talking about in the end of the video so this is a little uh, cliffhanger so if you are interested to know what i'm talking about look at the end of this video and i do apologize for the long video and I do apologize for the quick ending of this video. It was a little sentimental for me. So, okay, let's go uh, to the video. And, oh, sorry, and see the rest of this video. I'm sitting here in the uh, in the we call it lounge. My wife calls it lounge. I'm drinking grog. It's raining outside, but here's the smoker. I'm gonna start the smoker in a moment, and uh, smoke some nice meat. So um, look at the end of the video. It's a long video, I know. 
I do apologize and thank you, thank you, Mario and the Barbarian, for Mario and the Barbarian, for all help you had uh, done to me. You are a rock star. See you later, everybody. Yeah, I'm back again. <coughs> Sorry about that, I have to get your attention in some way. I'm gonna just show you the gear I'm used today. My own soap I made myself. Uh, I use this, I'm gonna put these things away here because I have other stuff I will show you, talk about. Gears in the first half, uh, six head racer without stabilizers and a uh, hollow line racer. Really beautiful in my opinion, it works really great. And it's sharp, so I'll cut myself there. Sealed. Took two seconds and finished sealing. Here we Swedish uh, nuclear waste from a nuclear plant here from Sweden. Beautiful stuff in my opinion. The only thing you have to think about when you use Swedish Hega, uh, it doesn't matter if it's this original or it's the blue Uppsala. Uh, you pronounce it, it's, it's Uppsala, it doesn't matter, Uppsala. <laughs> uh, don't use too much. Um, apply. A small amount on the you know on the face and you get really in my opinion really nice nice uh, feeling on the face afterwards and this is the brush I used by Emily Shaving Supplies brush uh, I made myself yes I'm going to talk about a uh, uh, story here about uh, I forgot it. Oh, not a story I thought I would could be uh, have fun with you but I didn't oh, sorry. <laughs> I do apologize. Now I'm going to talk about uh, my story of wet shaving. I started a couple of years ago, uh, I don't remember how many years, four, maybe four years ago, uh, with this razor. And this is a gold dollar my daughter bought me as a gift. And uh, I start to use this, use it once, does it work? <laughs> it was does hell. Uh, so I decided to buy a cheap chivette, so I bought this one. It's a very thin metal thing. You have an insert here. You put the D half D blade in there, and you put it in, and you can use this. Uh, so it, this razor actually works. It's no, not a bad razor, but very light. Uh, not maybe the best one. So. Meanwhile, when I was using this one, I sent this away for honing. I uh, found the group uh, War Talk in Sverige. Here is a Facebook group here, and I sent it to the Swedish best honer, uh, Niklas Gunnarsson. And I honed this, he honed this bad boy up, and then I started to enjoy these uh, wet shaving shaves with, uh, with uh, straight racers. So, this is actually my first straight racer, and this is my first Chevette I have ever used. Uh, Try different blades and so on, cut myself several times, small weepers here and there, but. That was too old. I want to start to uh, using wet shaving gears with straight races and so on. Uh, then I was thinking I want to try some D races. I bought uh, an old. It, it was, I think it was this one I found in uh, part. Uh, ah, I got I got this at least. It's an old vintage uh, Rootbot Mond racer. Uh, bought some blades uh, and start to use this one and. While I had this, I thought, why should I put this razor on? So, you know, I work in a, you maybe don't know, I'm a welder in a company. Uh, and uh, we had a lot of other machines there. Uh, so I asked a friend, that I, can you do this thing uh, with a hole and a smaller hole on the bottom? And uh, this is the prototype I did, two big holes and two big holes. So this is the first thing I uh, didn't, I didn't manufacture it. It was in my company where I had an, um, a friend of mine did it. And um, I have to send this away to get some evaluation, not evaluation, get some approval if it is okay, if you need a bigger hole, smaller hole, some other issues or so on. This is a stand for a straight a race. As you see, it flips because it's too big, this hole. Uh, the second generation I did was a smaller hole. And the person I sent this to was uh, uh, Jonny Jonsson. Uh, 
he does. I'm gonna link his uh, channel to this um, video. I'm gonna link all the people. If I mention every people, I'm gonna link them in this um, description of this sort. So this is the first thing I actually thought it was funny to do. It's a ripoff from another aluminum thing I saw on the internet. So this is the holder. And while I was doing this thing with that holder, I did not so many, but I asked my friend to do a couple of these. It's pure brass, so this is heavy as hell. <laughs> so. Uh, Meanwhile, I was starting to do these brush handles. I did these kind of brush, brush handles. Uh, I think this is the first batch I did of brush handles. I did five, I thought, or something like that. And I came up to this design. I was talking to Frank Strom Body Shark. How should this handle look like? If it's big or smaller, thinner, and so on. And eventually, it got this shape. <laughs> Uh, I sent, of course, uh, one to Frank and fa one to John Jonsson uh, to try out and get some feedback on what they thought about it. I bought these brush nuts from uh, Magars. I bought even... Oh, why didn't I put out these things? <laughs> I bought a smaller one, uh, not smaller, uh, a white one. Very soft, but I preferred this one much, much more. This knot, because... Uh, I like this one very much. It's the best knot, uh, synthetic knot I have used. I have not used so many, but some of them used. And I did, I can tell you, these are uh, two types. I, I don't know how to hold this. It should look so fucking pretty. <laughs> so these are the two, my, my first, uh, my first brushes I did look like this. And um, that's the reason why I call it the first brush. This design is called the first brush. All these brushes are branded with my initials, uh, as you can see in the bottom. Uh, with, and uh, uh, everyone is hand turned. There is no uh, no uh, machining in this uh, machine turn. So there are all slight differences. If you look at really careful, it's not the same. Uh, doesn't look exactly the same could be a different here, sometimes it is thinner here and thicker. So all this looks different, but still the same. And um, this is another brush I made, it's called it's a half brush, because this is exactly the part of the bottom. When I machined it too much here, these, sometimes these in the beginning got broken, so I chopped them off there and put a... <laughs> a, a uh, not on, in that, so I call this a half brush. And this is the first brush, this is the half brush. And uh, this is a long trip, I know. It's... Meanwhile, I was shaving, shaving, and this took a while when I decided what kind of brushes, handles I want to do. So I did some of these and sent some of these away to people all over the world, of course. I want to people to try out, I want to get feedback and things to know what people like. I tried. These are clear coated every one of these and I tried to or use some oil. Uh, I think no, I sent that away. <laughs> and I didn't like that, so I kept on doing with uh, with clear coat on everyone. Then I start to do this brush, call them two ball brush. These are oak. Uh, all these little brighter colours are oak. And these darker are walnut. I have at the moment two two ball brush handles left all the other I have sold <laughs> this is my own these four are my own i don't send these to no one because it's my own brushes i have used them all uh, as you see everyone branded with my initials even these two ball brushes i haven't sold so many of these two ball brushes some i do but not so many and um, yeah, that's the first thing I just check one more thing. <laughs> oh, sorry, this is the wrong. This is the first pouch I did. It's too big, and all these, as you can see, it's really, really big. Too big, it should be tight like that. But the similar type of it's an imitation skin. Uh, I do these pouches with uh, string in, so I can flip it like this, and the brushes in there when I deliver them to people and I thought that was a funny thing to do so I sew this myself with a machine I manufactured these by hand uh, drilling out the holes and buy some knots from Magars and glue them on and so on and so on it's 
really fun thing to do. And that point, Johan, uh, Johan Jonsson, sorry, he started to get his name ML Shaving Supplies and uh, somehow it stuck in my head. <laughs> I thought it was really funny. He is told it was of ML Shaving Supplies and another YouTuber said it's ML Shaving Supplies brushes I use and so on. It's a blah blah blah, you know. And um, sometimes I restore some razors and send them away and sell these razors for really cheap and so on. So sometimes they say, oh, this is a razor for ML Shaving Supplies and, and that's something that stuck. <clears throat> ML Shaving Supplies can tell you it's not a company, absolutely not. I have uh, no attention to start a company with that name. I don't uh, want to do these things to start a company to earn money because then there is another issue in uh, this thing you have to sell more and you have to do more things and you have to get money for your work you do this is a hobby I do and I think it's fun if I sell one of these brushes a month I'm fine if I sell 10 that's fine I, it, it doesn't I don't do it just because I want to sell them and earn money. I do this because I think it's fun to do. I've learned that doing this, I know this is my brushes, I'm really proud of these, and so on and so on. And if people want to buy them and they like them, of course I'll get the ego boost, of course, but it's not the reason why I do these things, just to earn money and try to report people. Because if there is an issue with some of my products I do, I say products because I have more things I can talk about. If there was an issue with one of my brushes, uh, I have everyone tried to fix the problem. I had a problem with the clear coat from the beginning. And if there are some issues at all, just contact me. I'm going to do the shipping cost and everything for you and try to fix that problem for you. I send you another brush or whatever it is and try to compensate you somewhere because I hate when people uh, contact companies and they know oh, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. It doesn't matter. I have done these things and I only correct them if I can, of course. Yeah. So that's that. And, and meanwhile, I was, of course, shaving with straight races. I bought more straight races. I start to use better straight races and, and vintage straight races and so on. And, and this hobby just grew and grew. I start to use more different types of soaps and shaving sticks and after shaves and splashes and pre shaves and blah, 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 and everything. So I, but I always stuck to straight races because that's actually. The thing I like most, most to use, and uh, a couple of months ago, I started to do even more things. This ML shaving supply stuck, so to do uh, no, it's a wrong, wrong scent. Sorry, start with the scent I, I did first. This we have maybe seen these ML shaving, it says ML shaving supplies. As I told you, it's not a company, it's a name, owner name. <laughs> it's a shaving soap from Sweden. I have made these shaving soaps myself. This is orange scented, 70 grams. The same thing here. Uh, wanted to try out to see, can I do? The same thing was with these brushes. Can I do them? Uh, I learned to do them. I didn't do it so right from the beginning, but it's getting better and better. The same thing was did. Actually, my first batch. With these ingredients worked well um, and then I decided to send 10 samples to Swedish sweat shavers here in Sweden uh, in the Wartalking group, uh, War talking, sorry, the share Facebook group and um, sent some to Johan Granat and Frank Strandberg and Johnny Olsen to try out. I wanted to get honest feedback and uh, I got a lot of feedback. Uh, Lots of positive feedbacks. I bought oh, what? <laughs> yeah, I, the soap worked for me, and I thought it was a great soap. But it doesn't matter what I think. It's the most important thing is what other people think. And I wanted to get some feedback. Uh, some people said something similar like this. Uh, it was a little bit dry, but when I use it second time, I add more water, and it's what was slick, very slick. Some people. They said they didn't like the scent. Mm, okay, <laughs> I send you an unscented soap, so that's the reason. <laughs> uh, I sent uh, sent um, to you one guy know what the Johnny Johnson and Frank Strömberg, the Swedish watch here in Sweden, and this mild mild scented orange scent. It was the first batch I did with orange scent, 
and I used two, not so much uh, orange, uh, since Roy orange, and uh, was very, very mild. Uh, this is more orange, still is very mild, in my opinion, and I don't want to do super strong. This is very mild. Uh, I like it mild. <laughs> so this is orange scented, the first uh, scent I did. And then I tried something. Looks exactly the same. See, there is no difference at all. The only thing is the scent description here. This is lime and lemon scent. Um, and that was a funny thing to do, uh, but somehow I really, really didn't like the scent. And then I did a much easier scent. It's a lime scent, uh, says there. Uh, so now I have two soaps I do. It's orange scent and a lime scent, but it all looks like this. They're wrapped in paper in the backside of everyone. It says uh, it's a Swedish flag and a um, P and a number. The B and Adamor is the the week this batch was made. This was week 21. This was week 25. So this is newer. This is an older. This lime lemon is much older. And uh, I do all these things by hand. I can show you some. Well, because when I start to do these soaps, I used <laughs> I boil these uh, soaps put them soap masses in this Pringles, not this, but in Pringles uh, tubes and pull it up right up to here something and then it's small small batches. I get 10 packs from one batch and when that's finished and it's cold the day after, uh, I chop them up in packs, They're always not always beautiful, <laughs> but still cutting my, this weed is going to be long, sorry, so I do apologize. But um, then uh, a week after, I let it sit, rest for a week. Then I thinking of packaging them uh, and I cut these papers, take a, a, a table, whatever you call it, a taldic in Swedish, a plate, sorry, <laughs> only ordinary plate in this size, put it of this kind of paper, silky paper or something that's really, really... And draw a ring, take a scissors and chop it. As you can see, not always so exactly. That's how I do it. And they'll do the same thing with black paper, with the wrappings that's around these. And I flip them over and uh, do a package with them. And I put these stickers, I want to show it's from Sweden. Because, and I, this round is more surface to know what week it is. And of course, look at this. This is how I do these labels. I'm not so fancy fancy. I don't have money. I just want to show you what ingredients and how it looks. It's an ordinary arc I printed with a printer, with a laser printer, not an um, ink, it's a laser. And I take a, a glass. So this is right size, like this, and uh, do a circle. Nowadays I have doing a circle in the, the Photoshop where I'm using, and it's really a circle. And then take my scissors and start to cut. And I cut these. So if you look at these, they are not 100% dead circles. They're very wonky sometimes. And I could do it better. I can buy some uh, stickers and pay a lot of money. But as I told you, I don't do this to be a perfect, super duper nice, because it's not a company, it's my own design, own things I do. Uh, so I do it cheap, <laughs> it's not cheap, I do it easy right now. But I cut them out and um, every time I send a pack to people, I send one uh, one more sticker, extra stickers. Uh, flag stickers and, and extra stickers for the label so they can glue them on something else. So then I take glue and just glue them on the pack. And sometimes if people want to have some tin, this aluminium tin, uh, it fits right snugly right there. So if they want to buy a pack, they can buy a pack. If they want the tin, then I'm gonna put the pack in the tin and they can smear it out and whatever they want to do it. And then I put, uh, now this is an empty tin, 
put a label on this so it looks like this and a Swedish flag on the back side. <laughs> That's the way I do it. So that was the history of uh, me, uh, my wet shaving uh, things I do from first Chevetta and first straight razor to a pack and a shave under three minutes. This is going to be a long video. I do apologize. And the thing in the end, I'm going to tell you right now, if you have managed to be for so long, is that these soaps, not everyone, but the, the orange scented and the lime scented, sorry, these two packs, uh, these scented are here. Uh, the orange scent is available in USA right now because I had uh, contact with the person that uh, I sent soaps to and he's going, going to sell them and uh, orange scent and lime scent soaps are on the way right now I posted them yesterday so if you from USA it's only for you in USA and Canada and um, whatever you live in that part on the other side of the pond if you are interested to buy, uh, I should say this in the beginning, but if you are interested to buy uh, one eye soaps, uh, then you have to contact Morion the Barbarian. Barbarian, Bar Morion the Barbarian. Sorry. <laughs> and I'm going to put uh, his uh, email address. Uh, it's here on the screen right now, here somewhere. Da -da 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 -da, somewhere there. And then I'm gonna even put it in the description of this um, uh, video. So if you want to get a hold of my soaps, I can tell you, is these the best soaps in the world? No. Is it the best scented soaps in the world? No. I have done this. I'm proud of this soap. It works for me. Uh, I have to get the nice feedback from people. If you should, grade soaps as a bad soap good soap and top-notch soap this is not a top-notch soap it's not a bad soap it's a really good soap in my opinion uh, in my opinion that's what i heard uh, between a top-notch soap and a good soap <laughs> something like that not not absolutely not bad soap and not super duper fancy soap it's a simple soap i have made I said it for a few bucks here in Sweden, uh, 70 Swedish crowns, I don't know, let's say seven, seven pounds or something, seven, something here in Sweden, plus shipping and so on and so on. So it's not an exclusive soap, uh, it's an exclusive soap in that mind that this unicorn and this everything is low here. You know, unicorns are very rare. I haven't never seen a unicorn before. There are people who have never seen my soap before, and that's very unique. And unicorn is very unique animal, and uh, this soap is very unique. So you can't get these soaps everywhere. You can buy it for me. Uh, I haven't sent anything, uh, some soaps to England, uh, but not in Europe yet. I'm gonna do it soon when the Corona crisis is over. If I'm still doing soap, I don't know how many batches I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do some more this weekend and so on. But in USA, it's available right now. These soaps and, and how long it takes before they are finished, I don't know. If I'm gonna send more, we shall see. If you want to buy this soap, contact uh, Marion the Barbarian, and he's gonna uh, give you the information how to get hand on this soap so i'm not selling these it's marion that's selling them uh, and he's taking care of business over there <laughs> i do appreciate this help from marion very very much and uh, it's really fun really really fun to uh, get him to do this thing uh, it was a dream when i managed to do my own soap first thing really really unbelievable i managed to do these brush handles and people want to buy them people talk about them sometimes i say when they photos i see these brushes and i found that that's fucking awesome it's my soap uh, no my my uh sorry my my um brush handles so i'm um, sorry i'm very proud yeah yeah Yeah. <laughs>